Welcome to the best of the Leon Charney Report. For over two decades, Leon Charney, one of the architects of the historic Camp David Peace Accords, has interviewed some of the most important figures in modern day history. These interviews provide a window into some of the most significant events of the last 50 years. In this excerpt, broadcast in September of 1989, Leon Charney speaks with then Defense Minister Yitzhak Rabin, who talks about trying to achieve peace in the Middle East with the involvement of the United States. And the obstacles Rabin faced then are similar to the obstacles facing peace in the Middle East now. Yitzhak, last Thursday, the United States government changed its policy in that it said that it would uh, initiate some direct talks with the PLO. What's your feeling about the situation? Well, I must admit that I didn't expect such a dramatic change immediately after his speech at the General Assembly that took place at Geneva, the American reaction was along the traditional lines of its policy for the last 15 years. Uh, 24 hours later, after the press conference of uh, Mr. Arafat, there was a dramatic change to the position that was uh, put uh, publicly by the U.S. administration. What worries me and uh, carries the potentialities of changing of U.S. policy is as follows. All through the years, since the end of the Yom Kippur War of 1973, there were some basic understandings between the United States and Israel in regards to the peace policy uh, toward the region to solve the Arab-Israeli conflict. One, to work together. Second, to try to cope first with Egypt. And not to try, not to attempt to achieve comprehensive peace by one act, realizing that the problem has to be dealt with one by one. Therefore, peace between Egypt and Israel was achieved, and no doubt it was a dramatic achievement for Israel, Egypt, and the United States. We were the three partners for the achievement of this peace. Second, in approaching the complex of issues eastward of Israel, with the purpose to achieve peace on Israel's eastern border, first and foremost with Jordan. Jordan is our neighboring uh, country east of us. Second, to solve the Palestinian problem. You cannot achieve solution peace on our eastern border without tackling and solving the, the Jordanian and the Palestinian problems. The essence that was laid down in the Camp David Accords that was the solid basis for our common policy, the United States, Israel and Egypt, was to tackle it gradually, first to autonomy, and as a transitional period, and later on, uh, Jordan, the Palestinian representation of, the, of the, the, the residents in the territories, Israel and Egypt will solve it permanently. The essence was linking the solution of the Palestinian problem to Jordan. Therefore, even in 1975, before the peace between Egypt and Israel was achieved, Dr. Kissinger, as a Secretary of State, and I, in signing the first step towards peace with Egypt, You were the Prime Minister then. And I was then the Prime Minister, worked a memorandum of agreement signed by Dr. Kissinger and Igal Alon, the late Igal Alon, who was the Foreign Minister in my government, submitted to the Congress of the United States, in which the United States committed itself not to have a dialogue with the PLO before one. The PLO will recognize the right of Israel to exist, second, will accept resolution 242 and 338 
of the United Nations Security Council as the sole basis for the solution of the Arab-Israeli conflict and all its parts. Later on, and rightly so, Secretary Schulz added a third uh, condition, renouncing terror and violence. I don't believe that Mr. Arafat, in his press conference, has taken upon himself anything that really changing or must change the U.S. position. Let's take only the terrorism. Bassam Abu Sharif, one of closest assistants of Mr. Arafat, came on the U.S. Uh, one of your networks and said very clearly, look, attacking Israeli military targets in Israel, in Israel's sovereign, on Israel's sovereign soil, attacking Israeli targets in the territories and for them a settlement along the Lebanese border is a military target. A bus is a military target. Second, he said, we will continue to cooperate with the Lebanese forces fighting Israelis along the Lebanese-Israeli border. Three, he said, the uprising in the territories, or what they call the Intifada, we will support and we are not committed, practically, uh, not to stop it. Therefore, all practical terror and violent activities against Israel, in accordance to their official spokesman, are going to be continued. Might be that uh, incident like Akila Lawa will not take place, even though we are aware that the group that belonged to Mr. Arafat PLO, the Abu Abbas group, intends to continue with their terror activities. Therefore, I am afraid that the United States, by its dialogue with the PLO, practically did not keep its commitments in accordance to 75 agreement, second, by trying to move towards to the PLO, detach itself from the essential and vital principle of linking the solution of the Palestinian problem to Jordan. If this will be the change, we are facing entirely new ball in the efforts to bring about peace, and I am afraid it will not enhance the prospects of peace, but might reduce them. Why do you think the United States did this uh, at this point, Yitzhak? I mean, you had a Reagan administration that was very, very favorable towards uh, Israel. You had Secretary of State Schultz, who was considered a really a good friend of Israel. He did not allow a, a, a visa for Arafat to visit, and 24 hours later, the whole policy reversed. Do you have any idea why this happened? I can't, I can't give you uh, an answer that I, I'm sure about it. I believe that certain disappointments of the administration uh, submerged. First, uh, the lack of positive response to Secretary Schultz's initiative of March, April, uh, 88. The Secretary of State came with his own initiative to bring the parties uh, around the negotiation table, and it was not received in a positive way by Israel and Jordan. Second, the decision of King Hussein uh, to cut to severe the legal and the administrative ties between Jordan and the population of the West Bank, and to a lesser extent with Gaza. Three, the need to appear on the part of the United States of trying to do something that might look of bringing closer the capability to talk with the Palestinians, and four, might be, since it's not a very popular move, to do it in the last months 
of the Reagan administration rather than to put it on the new administration in the United States. I am sure it was done in coordination between President Reagan and Secretary Schultz and President-elect Bush. In modern Middle East history, only one peace treaty has stood the test of time, the 1978 Camp David Accord. In the new documentary film, Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace, learn the true story behind the greatest diplomatic achievement of our time and its lessons for the future. The price of peace is very high to have this courageous man and my close man killed. Winner of the Telly Award for Best Cultural Program. Now available at select stores including Barnes & Noble and online at Amazon.com. The preceding program was brought to you by Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace.